O nga mihi, uh, kia tātou e karema um, uh, kā pai uh, kua tai mai um, uh, a koutou. Uh, just so you know, I wasn't meant to be presenting today. It was actually meant to be someone else, so you, they uh, had to rush off to something urgent in, uh, in uh, China. <laughs> so uh, you're stuck with me. Oh. Uh, better stop mucking around and do something proper. Um, this year, uh, for Matariki, I ended up doing uh, 61 different presentations across the country uh, in a three month period. And uh, I thought I had finished. Um, but because of the uh, unavailability of uh, others today, you are number 62, unfortunately for you. Um, but I'm doing something a little bit different. It's something that's really gotten under my skin in the last couple of months, particularly since I've started talking about uh, Matariki and releasing some, um, some kōrero that is really part of 20 years of research. I'm gonna tell you where my knowledge base comes from first. I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna tell you uh, uh, a little bit of kōrero about where I get my knowledge from. Then I'm going to move into how the stars get in the sky, because it's pretty hard for me to talk to you about astronomy until you understand how we believe our stars get in the sky. I'm going to focus a little bit on Matariki, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the thing that's really bugging me uh, about this space. I always start my presentations by saying, this is not the only version. Hey, this is not the only version. This is the only version you need to know. <laughs> This is not the only version, and there are tribal differences, and there are variations, and I think that's really important for us to realise. Is that keiko nei arangi e pahu pahu ana. And if you disagree with me, ka pai, ka pai, the quarter or that you have, and the quarter or that I have, may not necessarily be the same thing. The most important thing is that we are able to talk about these things, we're able to debate these issues, and Māori are able to lead it. And that's really the, the, the guts of what I want to talk about. So uh, Māori astronomy, I think everyone thinks that Matariki is the only star in the sky, and that's the only star we talk about. Matariki, that's it. Okay, We have a record of over a thousand Māori names for the different stars, and the vast majority of them being identified, where they are, what they mean, when they rise, when they set. Yet we only ever seem to talk about Matariki. There's a real imbalance with our Māori astronomy. Also, everyone thinks they were only used for navigation. Okay, and we think, oh, you know, we navigated by the stars. We did, but that's only one very small, narrow field of astronomy. We planted by the stars, we gardened by the stars, we hunted by the stars. Uh, there are stars that tell you um, when you should travel, there are stars that tell you uh, when you should have relations with your wife. Seriously. Um, part of what we're doing is we're making that Māori star app, you know, we hold it up and you can tell the Māori star name and the constellation. I hope you enjoyed your ride on the golf cart. So there are stars for all types of things, all kinds of occasion. There's even a star to tell you when you should be, and I might show it to you later on, when you should be having relations with, with your, not your relations, with your wife <laughs> or your husband. And it's a big, it's Toranui is the name of this uh, constellation, it's a big ure. <laughs> and uh, you know, I've been thinking to myself, how do I show that? When someone gets their app out and they look, oh, there's a waka and there's a, there's a kumar and oh! <laughs> you know, do I, do, I, do I disguise it and put a cool fai fi on it or something? <laughs> anyway, what I guess I suppose I'm trying to 
stress here is navigation is one very, very small component. And they didn't navigate by a lot of stars. They only had a deep knowledge of a select few stars to navigate. So I think navigation in Matariki, there's so much more about Māori astronomy. You know, our ancestors were absolutely uh, incredible with their ability uh, to view things in space. Their sight was so unusually strong that they saw more stars than we can. This is Colenso. He asserts that he could prove that the natives could see the satellites of Jupiter with the naked eye. What he's talking about, he's talking about the moons traversing the face of Jupiter with the naked eye. That is unbelievable. And he tested them over a four day, four night period with his telescope. It was in the far north. And he'd say, yeah, tonight, yeah, there is three moons, two up there, one down there. And he could see them. And then the next night he'd tell them when, the times they traversed the face of Jupiter, that ability, your eyes are like a muscle. Okay, I'm not too sure why I'm doing that, but your eyes are like a muscle. <laughs> and if you spend all day staring out across the open plains or across the oceans or all night staring into the space, your eyes become accustomed and you begin to pick up things that we have no ability to pick up now because we, we watch things in front of our nose. You know, the sky we watch is on our television. You know, we have lost that ability to pick out these really, really detailed things in space. And our ancestors were phenomenal. And there were schools of astronomy outside every important village. And Tohunga would go in there with their students from sunset to sunrise. Now there's a number of records of these buildings. I see you, Shay's people had a farewana set aside for astronomy that was on Ruape. We have one, had one in my own community and it was the walls, but no roof. And so they used to lie there and look up at the stars night after night. So these things existed. And I want to start this with showing you, talking to you about where my knowledge base comes from. I'm from here. This is just uh, a couple of streets over from Ponsonby. <laughs> um, in the year 1898, you'll all know um, this person in the middle. Uh, there was a speaker speaking in here this morning. Uh, that's his ancestor, Elson Best. Uh, Elson Best was in uh, Te Urewera in the... Um, well, he spent a, a number of years there. His main informant was a man by the name of Tutakanaho. Tutakanaho was a very well-known tohunga. Uh, Tutakanaho uh, spoke to Elson Best and uh, Best said to him, Look here, I really want to write a book on Māori astronomy. Where do I go? And he sent him to these two men, Te Koko and his son Rawiri Te Koko. They lived uh, in a wharepuni next to this wharenui here down the bottom of the hill there. And they were tohunga kōkōrangi. That's the proper word for astronomy. We use this word tātai arorangi, kōkōrangi means astronomy. That's its proper phrase. And a tohunga kōkōrangi is an astronomer. So these two were tohunga kōkōrangi. And uh, they turned up to, best turned up to interview them. And Best had this nautical star map. That's the only way I can explain it. This big star map, big thing. And he said, well, I want some knowledge of stars. And they gave him a little bit of knowledge because they wanted his star map. Because <laughs> it had all the Western names and constellations on it. And so he spoke to them for a couple of days. And Best went off and he wrote his book, Astronomical Knowledge of the Mao. That's this book here. To this date, remains the most comprehensive collection of Māori star lore in existence. 85% of that book comes from these two individuals. Yet you will not see their name recorded once in that publication. And he may fight there now. Because when he went back to see Tutakanaho and he says, look, um, I I've got all this knowledge. I, I want to write down who gave it to me. And he said, kauwaka. Kauwaka. Kauwarau. Do not, don't dare. Because not only were they tohunga kōkōrangi, they were tohunga whaiwhaiā. 
Ohunga Makutu. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, the only, any non Maori speakers in here, that the only way I can explain that is if they were in Harry Potter, they'd be in Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my, um, the, the community was, was scared of these individuals and did not want their names recorded. And so Best left them out. And he writes this unusual quote, he, you know, he, they gave him knowledge, a little bit of knowledge, albeit. And he says, yeah, the available data concerning Māori star law is now exhausted. And this account must be closed. The knowledge gained by us of the subject is meagre and unsatisfactory, but it is now too late to, rem to remedy the deficiency. So, guanaru. So he's saying, it's all gone. And the ones that are left, I only know a little bit. What he didn't know is that from 1898 to 1931, those two took this map and they wrote a book. That manuscript is 400 pages. It has a thousand Māori star names and the English equivalents because they had this star map and they wrote down the names. It has 102 constellations. Ia fetu he kōru. Ia kāhui fetu he kōru when it rises, what it means, what it looks like, how to read it. Now, tino tu hoi nei nā kōru. Their ancestor, um, the ancestor of uh, Te Kōkau was a tohunga uh, kō He actually comes out of the Whanganui region. And uh, his name was Te Piki Kōtu. And he came out of that region and he came through the Tuwharetō region and he left descendants there. And he came through the Maniapoto region and all of you that know the Kuia Rovina, he left descendants there, that's her. And then he came through Tainui and he left descendants there. He was quite a uh, prolific uh, person. <laughs> then he went to Te Arawa and he left descendants there. And then he came into Tūhoi and we're the younger descendants and uh, this is where this knowledge base comes from. So it is. Very too hoi. And um, on his deathbed in 1933, Rawiri Te Kōkau gave that book and the map that was folded inside it to his grandson who was 12. And he said, Anei tō puka puka. And the grandson was petrified of his grandfather because he was a mākutu. So he took that book and he put it under his bed and it stayed there for 50 plus years. So there it was collecting dust until his whakaputa mohi or grandson asked him one day, oh, you know anything about stars? Kākata te kuraua. And that was me, he gave me that book. And so, I still have that book. It hasn't burnt in a fire or been stolen, it's still there. But for the last 20 years, we've been using the book as a baseline. Because it's not, you know, I'm just concerned with saying, ane nā kōrero, and it just comes out of that book. So we've been researching, gathering as much data, interviewing different people, upsetting some people, um, gathering as much data as we can around Māori astronomy. And so that's where this knowledge base comes from. We also have a research kaupapa here, the Māori Afiritoi, that's based in uh, the Faculty of Māori and Indigenous Studies. Straight across there where we've uh, got a few research projects looking at Māori astronomy. So that's where the knowledge base that we're going to talk, that I'm going to talk about comes from. Uh, I just want to sh talk to you a little bit about the creation of the world. Um, there are many different versions, Neha. Different versions. This is a, a real Matatua version. Um, my tribe, we don't have eel. Okay, we, have, we start with Rangi and Papa. That's just how we are. Other tribes have eel, Kaitipai. We, we don't have 10. Rangi, we, uh, we don't have 12, we only have 10. Others have 12. Because we have only got 10 fingers. And that's as far as we counted. Then we ran out. Some tribes have 12. And I'm wondering whether or not you've got 12 fingers. That's a sign of inbreeding. That's a bad thing. Anyway, the Tu 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 Kaurewa is uh, uh, the name of the pantheon of gods. That's the first... Uh, gods that come from Rangi and Papa. And here they are. And um, 
when Rangi and Papa were, were stuck together and the gods debated their separation and Tane ripped them apart. Okay. Tafiri Matea disagreed. He absolutely disagreed with their separation. And uh, his brothers didn't listen. They separated his parents and cut away the last sinews because there were still vines holding them together. And he got out his ads and he cut them away. And uh, he left them in a heap on the ground. And then um, Tafiri decided he would war against his brothers. And so he went and found Tane and he beat him. And he found uh, Romo and he beat him. And he found Tangaroa and he beat him. And then he came to our God, the God of war, the God of mankind. This is the God who we take after. We have all the good traits that he gives us. Jealousy, <laughs> lust, anger, revenge, uh, no no tuara. <laughs> Uh, we have all of these things to send to us from two. And two beat Tafid. And in his frustration, his love for his father and his hatred of his brothers, two, uh, Tafid, sorry, ripped his eyes out, crushed them in his hands and threw them to the sky and they stuck to his father's chest. Na mata o te ariki Tafid matea. Na mata ariki matariki. That's where it gets its name from. So, Tafiri Matea, as you'll see in the, in the photo, is a blind god. That's a reason that you never pick the way the wind's coming. Neha. A tree always grows the same way, and a fish will swim the same way, but the wind, the weather, will never ever be predicted because he's a blind god, and he's an angry blind god. Neha. And he thrashes his way around. He atua hu nei nei. Na mea mōhio ki tēnei kupu hu nei nei. Anyone know the word hunene? He didi wahine te hunene. Te tāne, he didi ahiraraufe. A man gets angry like a, like a fern fire. He gets angry, he reacts, then the fire goes out. Hunene is a fixation. Wahine ma? That you hand down generation after generation. <laughs> Alright, I'll stop because I'm going to get myself into trouble. Okay, after the two to two kaurewa, there were Tango Tango and Wainui. Tango Tango is the darkness, as in Paul Tango Tango. Wainui is the ocean, open ocean or the op open waters. Tango Tango, I had an uncle Tango Tango, he was very black. <laughs> and they had a number of children. First was Te Ra, the sun, then Te Marama the moon, all the stars, Nā Whetū, Hinā Tore, Hinā Tore is like a phosphorus light, that's also to my knowledge the word that is appropriate for you having an epiphany, you know, kua taka te kapa, that kua taka te kapa or kua muda nā raiti, those are ma, uh, Pākehā phrases that have been translated, Neha. okay, kua hinā tore, Okay. Have you had a glimmer? But koi koi is, uh, I explain this, and every time I explain it this way, I can see the people who understand fully what I'm talking about. Pari koi koi is the light you use when you jump out the window when you're not meant to go out, <laughs> and your eyes adjust to the darkness. <laughs> ah, I got to get down your puto. Okay, that's pari koi koi. And the last one, uh, Shay knows the star, Hinero Amua. This is a very petite. She's a princess. She is a princess, yes. She's a very petite rehe. She's very dexterous and, and athletic looking female. She's like, shaped like that. And not. Okay. <laughs> okay, Anne. So there's Tamo Tamo in Wainui. The sun, the moon, the stars. Hina tore, pari koi koi, and hine roa moa. So, um, to house his children, Tango Tango built the first house ever. The name of this house is Hui Te Rangiora, the gathering of all of the light or living things on the earth. And he put them in his house. So, in Hui Te Rangiora, you know, as you walk into a whare nui, straight above the door on the inside, he hung the sun. 
And where the pōtoko manoa meets the roof, uh, in the middle of the house, he hung the moon. And then he hung the stars in patterns along the walls of the house. This is the origins of tukutuku. That's why they're patterns. He hung them in shapes and patterns. And then the last three, he put them at the back of the house, at the back wall. Uh, and, you, you know, there's a saying, when Rangi and Papa were separated, light flooded into the world. Kao. When they were separated, the world was still dark. The only light was within Hui Te Rangiora. And Tāne wanted to bring light to the world. So he came and saw his uh, relation, Tango Tango, and he said, Hey what? Can you give me your children? And Tango Tango being a male said, Take them. <laughs> Get them out. <laughs> Wayne knew he was a little bit, oh no, I am one, no, no, get out. <laughs> he said, what do you want them for? He said, I want to bring light to the world. It's kapai. Take. <laughs> so remember I told you how Tane cut the last remaining vines away from Rangi and Papa? He went back and found those vines and he wove three baskets. Wahine ma, koutou nga mea whakapono, nga te wahine te ra, uh, mahi, te raranga. It actually started with Tane. Those are the first three baskets. And they're not the baskets of knowledge, okay? They were male baskets, so they were rough and crude, okay? He didn't make them fine. He ah, wove that one. The first one, its name is Rodurangi, and he put the sun in that one. Then he wove the next one, the Kohanga, and he put the moon in that one. And then he put the next one up, and its name is Te Mangoroa or Te Kete Nui, and he put all the stars and everything else in there. Then he went and saw another relation, uh, Tipuna by the name of Tamarereti, who was the owner of the first canoe. Now we, my people, me and Te Kahautu, we call this canoe uh, Punariki. Uh, here, my understanding is they call it Urua. And this canoe with Tane and, uh, and the baskets and Tamarereti, they went out across the ocean to a place where the you ever see the horizon where it meets the ocean? There's a line, where it, not where it meets the land, where it's on the ocean. That place is called Te Pai Wai o Te Rangi. And when they got to Te Pai Wai o Te Rangi, the canoe went up into the sky. They got into place, they threw the anchor overboard, and then they started to hang the object star net. And he had, well, he, he's actually, he went to hang Hinero Amoa, and he fell in love with her because she's this pretty princessy sexy looking star I guess <laughs> and he married her she's dexterous eh? really fine and they had a descendant and her name is Hinedewewe and so we think weaving comes from her the combination comes from her the form comes from her father the dexterous fine weaving comes from the mother comes out in Hinedewewe then he said oh I'll hang the rest he hung Parikoi Koi still dark he hung Hinerawa Moa oh, Hinatori sorry still dark he thought to himself, hmm, I'm going to hang the stars. But I'm going to hang them like my relation, Tango Tango hung them. I'm going to hang them in patterns and lines. And so he started to hang them. And so those are the big stars you see in patterns. You ever see the pot? The reason it's in a line and it's in a shape is because Tane hung it with his hand. And those of you that know where the Southern Cross is, again, Tane put it up with his hand. So he hung up the major constellations, the big stars, the shapes. Then he looked back to himself and said, Foo, that is awesome. He really wanted to celebrate what he'd done. So he put the basket at his feet and started to do a haka. He started to haka, yes, I'm the man. I'm going to put a smiley face over here, a Pokemon over here. And he started to haka. And as his haka become more vigorous, he stuck his and then he kicked his foot out, kicked the basket over. <laughs> the basket toppled over, all of the stars scattered into the cosmos. And he left it. That's the reason some stars are in patterns and the rest are scattered. It's recorded in a karakia. <coughs> the line says, Ringihia ite kete kote ika nui o te rangi. And spilling from the great basket like a fish with the stars. Ka ngaro ki And they were lost into the universe. Because... Tani, yeah, he's a male. Made a hoo of a mess and left it. <laughs> if it had been a female, would it? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Get the spray and wipe. <laughs> Get the vacuum. Cleaned it all up and started again. We got the wahine, but he's a male tani. He goes, oh man. Okay. He hung the moon and then he hung the sun. It was only when the sun went in the sky that uh, we get the world that we know. And I'll, I'll, this is, <laughs> we made this budget as um, <laughs> Spielberg. <laughs> Think those, these are the three baskets. Well, some of you might know the Maori that made this. Here's the waka, this is Tamarinetis canoe. And um, we couldn't afford the budget that they have for Avatar to show the stars. So we had to get fairy lights from the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> they do the trick. So there he is, this is Satani, aka Kawariki Morgan. <laughs> and he uh, reaches into the basket and there he pulls out <laughs> Very lights. And that's how the stars uh, get into the sky. And Koro was looking at them thinking, Fo, I'll do a haka. So you can tell that's Kawari. Stamping with his left foot, you tell him, Hapa tira, five marks off at Matatini. There with his left foot. I kicked the basket over. <laughs> and then uh, Tane uh, uh, hung the moon. You'll see the moon in a minute. There it is. We gave light, but not enough. Finally, he, um, he put up the sun. And this is how we get the world of light. So, I'm going to show you this photo over Shay's Mountain. Now what you're looking at there, you see the Milky Way in an arch like that? What you're looking at there is when you look at the blackness of the Milky Way, you're looking back inside the basket. The basket is tipped up like this, and all the stars are spilt out on both sides. Okay, so that's the Mangaroa, or Tenka Nui, or Te Kete Nui, or the Milky Way, whatever else you want to call it. Um, yeah, Ka Nui Tena, we'll start getting carried away. I told you that Tane hung uh, the Southern Cross, and they, it's actually uh, an anchor of the canoe. Here are the names. Here's the names in the Southern Cross. These are the, the different names. They all have a corridor, each of these names. Here's the canoe. It's really, really things me off when I go into places where um, other people say that Te Waka o Tamarediti. This is not Māori. But other institutions are saying it is along the horizon. There is no evidence that we've been able to find that comes anywhere near close to supporting that. Yet there's mountains of evidence saying this tail of Scorpius is the Wako or Tamarediti. And Tamarediti is still on the canoe, that's the star there, and his fishing line. So he's fishing in the heavens. There's a quarter about Tamarediti, he fished up a oa, a herring. He was hungry and he swallowed it whole and he choked and died. That's what I tell you. Chew your food. <laughs> okay, so there at the bottom you can see the canoe, you can see the rope, that's the tauro, te waka, o tamarediti, all the way to the anchor. Okay, now this is a circumpolar star. So it goes around a constellation, the Southern Cross anyway, around, the anchor goes around and around. All the other stars, they rise and they set. The star goes around and around and around. And we're lucky, because if it didn't, and the anchor didn't stay in the sky at all times, like this, it would float away and all the stars would disappear from the sky. So the Southern Cross, or Mahutonga, is the constellation that anchors all of our stars in the sky. Okay. We're going to talk about Matai. <coughs> mm. Like I say, there are different versions. 
and mine is only one version. I'm going to throw a few things out there for us to debate and think about. And you can disagree, you can agree. Hey, to bite. I'll go hide after this. Okay. There are seven stars in Matariki. There are seven stars in Matariki. Okay. My research within my was book and elsewhere has nine stars in Matariki. Now, this whole seven, nine, I, I want you to understand that across the ancient world, there are records of six, seven, nine, twelve, fifteen, seventeen, twenty-two. The Prophet Muhammad is said to have been able to pick twelve with his naked eye. The Greeks had nine. Okay, in Hawaii there's a record of nine. On Easter Island there's a record of nine. In Mangaya there's a record of nine. Other islands have six, others have five. What I'm saying is let's not be uniformed about thinking we all have to think the same way. Now, here's a quote that says, I found the Māori could see more stars in the Pleiades with the unaided eye than I could. For a while I could only see clearly six. They could see seven and sometimes eight and sometimes more. Okay, so it comes down to your ability. It comes down to light pollution. It comes down to all these different factors, whether or not you could see them. One of the things I do know that's not Māori is this idea of seven sisters. Okay, that is a Greek myth. The Greeks have nine stars, and they are two of them are Atlas and Pallio, who are the parents. Atlas is the guy that holds up the, the earth and looks like me. <laughs> and uh, he had seven daughters, and uh, he tried to keep them away from Orion. So Zeus turned them into a flock of doves and then into stars. And that's why we get the seven sisters. So the seven sisters is a Greek myth. Someone's told me, oh, they're the Māori seven sisters. Oh. Well, unless there's been some sex change operations in the last rising of Matariki, I can tell you they're not all female. They are not a flock of doves, Māori. We, they're not a flock of keriru, that someone told me. Okay? They wouldn't, that, that many keriru wouldn't last where I'm from. No one here from Doc. And even though... That's a Greek story, and even though this might look like the Kapahaka group from Duatahuna. <laughs> these are Greeks, this is a Greek Gordon. They are not little eyes. <coughs> you know who coined little eyes? Elton Best has come up with little eyes. And we have been pushing this Gordon since the time of Best, since the time of Smith, since the time of White. We've been saying little eyes, little eyes, little eyes. <laughs> In all of the rangahau, in all of the early Māori newspapers that I've gone through, in all of the moteatea, in all of the karakia, I am yet to find a Māori that says little eyes. That's after 20 years of searching. Tirohia, Hawaii, they are maka li'i, eyes of the god. Samoa, they are mata li'i, ri'i, eyes of the chief. Tahiti, eyes of the god. Rapa Nui, eyes of the chief. Only kia tai tātou, ki aotearua, ka little eyes. <laughs> hey, we finally get here, we have little eyes. I was going to say something that was kind of verging in a little bit of, that was inappropriate, I'm going to leave that. Uh, there is a story from a woman called Kate Clark, and uh, she says it's a Māori story how Matariki was once this great star, and the other stars got jealous and they broke it into pieces. And uh, it fell from the sky and it was all these little pieces. And that's how it gets little eyes. I'm not too sure how that gets little eyes. Okay, number one. Number two, that's not from Aotearoa. That is a Cook Island story. That's a from, that is from the Cook Islands. And even there, they don't say that that's little eyes. Its name is Matariki Tini Tini, which means the many little Matarikis. There's no discussion there of little eyes. So kia tu patotata. Because little eyes doesn't have a quarter or niha. I need to find what little eyes means. Matariki na matotea ariki tafiri matea. 
Okay. These are where they are placed according to um, the research. Mike Rowe puts them in these positions. And he gives the additional two. Bohutukawa and Hiwai Terangi. And then he goes on to explain. You want me to go on to talk about what each one means? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Bohutukawa is the star that's connected to the dead. This is the star that carries our dead across the year, across the sky for the year. Everyone thinks that, Buhu, that Matariki is a sign of togetherness and celebration, and it is. Kai te tika. But its first acknowledgement is to the dead. Tupu anuku. Tupu means to grow. Anuku in the ground. Okay, this is a star that will tell you what your kumara garden is going to be like or how your daffodils are going to grow. Okay, this is connected to everything that grows in the ground. Tupu arangi. Grow in the sky. You think, what grows in the sky? Well, birds, berries from the trees above you. This star tells you what your produce is going to be like from what your bird's going to be like. Don't eat those anymore. Waiti. Real waiti means you've got a clear voice. Yeah, beautiful clear voice. Waiti means fresh water. And it's connected to everything that comes out of fresh water. Eels, fresh water fish. Rotten corn. The word ta is an old word for salt. The word tota means sweat, which is salty. Waita is salt water, and it's connected to the ocean. I've heard all these stories, oh, they're fairy sisters, and then they, you know, and they are twins, and they're oh. <laughs> yeah. Waipuna Arangi. That's wrong, it should be Waipuna Arangi. Who did this? Water that pools in the sky. This is connected to the rains. Okay? This is all the rains that fall, and this is going to tell you how much rain you're going to get for the year. Ururangi. Ururangi, uru, wind. This is connected to the winds and tell you how windy it's going to be for the year. This last star is called Hiwa Terangi. Hiwa means to grow lush. And uh, it is a... Anyway, that's the only picture I could come up with explaining what they mean. This means, this is a star you make a wish upon. And I know some of you are thinking, ooh, that sounds pretty bloody, you know, wonderful world of Disney. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket is the only thing I could uh, think to think of uh, to explain this star to you. At the rising of Matariki, the Tohunga would take out people who had a wish or a desire in their heart, and they would take them out to the garden, and they would dig a trench. And you would stand in the trench and face Matariki and they'd cover your feet with soil. Because they're planting you like a seed. They're planting your, your wishes into the earth. And they would karakia. And part of that karakia are the lines, Kohiwa nui, kohiwa ro, kohiwa pūkina, kohiwa wānanga, taka taka te kāhui, o te rangai kui a pauto, putanga ki te whai ao ki te Great hiwa, wonderful hiwa, the scene from the sky, plant my wishes in the ground and make them come true. And so, you send your wishes to Hiwa. These are them. Now there's a reason why they're placed where they are. Okay? Māori always have rangi above Nukuniha. Okay, you go to the Star Dome in Auckland and you see rangi's way down the bottom and nuku's way up the top. How do they to Māori? Rangi is always above nuku, they're both connected to food, there's male and female, there's balance. That's why those two are there. Waiti and Waita, both connected to food, one is male, one is female. The reason Waiti is above Waita is fresh water always flows down to salt water. Salt water never flows down to fresh water. Mama neha. Okay, Ururangi and Waipunarangi are above the rest because that's where your weather comes from wind and your rain come from above. That's why they're up there. Male, female, there's balance. The reason Pohutukawa and Hiwe Terangi are there, I have no idea. The reason they are both female, I have no idea. My Kuroiwa does not record 
why they are there. What he does say is these two stars are the two sacred stars in the cluster. These are the two tapu stars. One is connected with carrying your, our dead. One is connected with our deepest, darkest desires, our hopes and our wishes and our wants. Those things that you only share with others very, very sparingly. Guide i tapu ai. One of the things that's also left out of the um, of the uh, at times is who the father is. Okay, Rehu is the father. Rehu is uh, uh, an atua of many things, but one of his domains is well-being. This is where Rongoa and the knowledge of Rongoa comes from, from Rehu. And he married Matariki, and her sign is well-being as well. So that's what she does. She looks after the cluster, and she is also connected to well-being. And uh, a number of karakia are said to Rehua and said to Matariki in order to make someone uh, well. And Pahutukawa is the oldest. Iwe Te Rangi is the youngest. And that's how the rest of them come out in their whakapapa. Kapai? OK. One of the massive misconceptions we're going to talk about is when to look for Matariki. Because yeah, that's that's quite tino here, Tata. Okay, we're going out to look for Matariki. It's not even in the sky. Okay, we're going. Oh, let's celebrate Matariki. Oh, I've got to tell you. So I'm not going to tell you where this happened. But I went out with this group. They said, "Hara mai koe, hara mai. Come down and take us out, and and uh, we're going to have Matariki." And I'm thinking, I said, "How, man? Matariki is two weeks off." Okay, the bike. I'll come. They said, "Please come down and you do the kōrero." So, okay, so I got down there and uh, they had a group there and this one person did a karakia, I uh, did a karanga. This woman said, I'm going to do the karanga when Matariki comes up. She said, there it is, there it is. This is four in the morning. Etu Matariki ki tetu wa. Beautiful karanga. She finished her karanga, they did a karakia and then the kaumatsu said, Rangi. I said, oh well, e hoa ma. That's Venus. Go home. We're two weeks early. <laughs> it was silent. What? That's Venus. She goes, that's Matariki. I said, that's Venus, eh? Eh, kui. Kareo noa Matariki kia tu. We're way too early. And the reason that we are too early is because we are not following what was left to us by our Maori ancestors. We are following interpretations of the people like best. And we've got into our mind that the first new moon in June you will never, ever, ever, unless you move to Botswana, see Matariki in the sky in the first new moon of June. It will not be there. That is the best translation, and we are continuing to follow it. For you to know when to look for the stars, you need to know the Maramataka. Our ancestors followed what's called, we're going to get a little bit technical and sciencey, not too much. Our ancestors follow what's called a loony star calendar or a lunar star calendar. So they waited for a phase of the moon and waited for a star to rise and they triangulate them and then they work out what's happening on the ground. That's how they worked it. What we're doing is we're saying the first new moon. The new moon is Fidel. Fidel is the god of death, disease, plague, pestilence, all the good things. Okay, who's the num num that wants to go out? and look for the signs of prosperity in the year in the time of fetal. That's not how our ancestors approached that. They did not look for signs during the time of fetal. Fetal was a dark time. So in the Maramataka, the best time to do anything is what's called the last quarter, or the Knights of Tangaroa. So the first new moon in Pipiri is way up there. Is the is the no moon, right up the top on the left hand side. That's when we were celebrating it. The time to look for it is here. So you wait for the best time. Okay, you wait for the best time in the lunar phase. You understand that the sun is a male and the, and the moon is a female, eh? And the sun, he doesn't rise in the same place every day. In the winter, the sun rises northeast, and that's why it's so cold and long, dark, dark nights, because he only arcs across the sky. But in the summer, as we, the earth tilts back on its axis, 
the, the, the sun rises east and he's long. We get our long, warm days. That's why. But the sun is consistent. He's a male. Okay? We're creatures of habit. We're easy to work out. We do the same things pretty much the same way. We're not very clever at times. You know, we do the same thing. The moon is a female. Okay? And she has, as you can see, many moods. <laughs> like this. <laughs> Often in one day. <laughs> in my house, I'm just saying. And the bottom's out for a week. And then... so my wife's not here, so I can see. <laughs> okay. The best time when it's at its height is the first or the four nights of Tangaroa. That's when you look for Matariki. And the celebration of Matariki happens over this time. So it happens. Tangaroa, 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 Otane, Oromo, Mutifenua, then you stop. You never carry your celebration into Fido, because it might turn up. So what are you guys doing? Can I come to your party? Okay. That's why you stop before you get into Fido. This is the time. So this year, People were out at the 6th of, of, of June uh, looking for Matariki, okay? Matariki wasn't visible to the 18th, so way, way later in the month. And then it wasn't, that's probably around the full moon, then these are the times to view it. So we were way, way too early. I'll show you uh, in a minute. So Bess says the new moon, the first new moon in June thinking June's pipiti ka. June's not pipiti. June is a 12-month Gregorian Western calendar. Pipiti is a maramataka that follows the moon, not, the, not, not a numerical system. So that's when we're getting mixed up, as we're trying to slam our maramataka into a Western calendar, and we're getting out of sync with our environment and the signs of our environment. Number one. Number two. Tu takanaho says the time to look for Matariki is in Tangaroa. Mike Rowe in his manuscript says the time to look for Matariki is in Tangaroa. Were Mutafai. Whanauapa Nui Tohunga Maramataka says the time to look for Matariki is Tangaroa. Aperahama Tau Nui, Tohunga prophet from the far north in his Māori newspaper writing says the time to look for Matariki is in Tangaroa. Why are we looking in the new moon? Because we're following Nā kōrero a te Pākehā, e whakarere ana i nā kōrero a o tātou tīpū. Okay. Uh, here is Te Wako Orangi. Uh, that's its generic name. Here they'll know this as Te Wako o Tainui. Ana e. I'll show you this one. This is what it is. These are all these different parts of this waka. This waka is a giant death barge. <laughs> okay. Pretty, pretty uh, morbid, I guess. Um, there is a corridor that when Matariki rises, it is at the front of this massive canoe. This canoe belongs to that man there called Taramainuku. Taramainuku has a net. When this constellation rises in the morning, on the eastern horizon, he lets his net across the earth and he trawls the earth for all the people that had died during that day. And before the, uh, before the rising of the sun, he hauls them up onto his canoe and he hangs out dead from that place called Te Hao Orua. And they hang from the back of the canoe like the feathers. And they hang there and he does this night after night, month after month, from the month of Pipiri all the way to May, to Haratua. When this canoe sits in the sky next to the sun, Matariki sits next to the sun, then it's missing for a month. And now Mate go to be prepared in the underworld. When they come back like this, in Pipiri, Taramainuku gets off his canoe, he grabs the kura kura from the back of the canoe and he scatters them into the stars. This is the moment that your spirit becomes a star in the sky. You wait for a 12 month, well not a 12 month, but for the rising of Matariki before our dead and we release our dead. This is the moment. I'm going to show you Matariki setting. 
This is called Matahikari Piwai. This is from Huntley. So you can see the moons in the Tangaroa face. This is the western sky. Okay, so the, this is at sunset. So the sun's coming down. Hurry up. There's Matariki, there's a canoe, it's tipped up. There is the sun diving into the west, taking our deep with it for the year. Now you won't see Matariki because the sun's too bright, but you can tell by the position of Tautoru and the lunar phase and the right month that our dead have gone for the year. And we wait for them for a month. For a period called Te Matahi o Te Tau. Tangaroa phase of the moon, this was this year. We wait for them to come up. And they rise just before the sun. There's Matariki. There's a canoe. Up comes the sun. Bringing out dead and Taramainuku scatters them across the sky. I'm going to go back to show you that canoe again. That's what our tipuna were looking at when they are looking for the rising of Matariki. There are three major things that happened during Matariki. Three major tukana. And I'm pretty much going to end on this soon before I go into my rant about why I'm saying hands off my stars. Okay? The first thing that the, they would do is they would wait for Matariki to rise in the right lunar phase at the right month, and then they would take their reading for the year. They would go outside, and the tohunga kōkōrangi would look at Matariki and say, hmm, it's going to be a good year to plant your vegetables this year. It's going to be a bad year to fish in the ocean, because ururangi is really hard to see, which means there's going to be a lot of wind. We're going to have problems getting out on the ocean. But white tea is really, really bright, so we know we're going to catch lots of eels. Tipuanuku is really bright. We know we're going to get a lot of vegetables. But Tipuarangi is kind of hazy, which means we're not going to catch birds easy. We're not going to sit in the perch. You know, KFC is going to struggle this year. <laughs> so you read them in combinations. Yeah. You read them in combinations. If Hiwaiterangi is bright, you know I'm going to send my wishes there this year. Lotto numbers. If Waipunarangi is bright, you know that there's not going to be that much rain. But if it's hard to see, we're going to have a, a lot of rain. If Pohutukawa is bright, then not many people are going to die that year. If it's hard to see and missing from the sky, Kapa te ringo ai tu We don't know kōrero. Don't usually talk about that one. But yeah, we don't know tohu. Once they had done that and read the signs, the next thing they would do, what's called a taki mō te atea. They would weep and call out the names of the people who have died since the last rising of Matariki. So you would mourn for them. You'd call out their names and release them. Paramainuku is throwing them into, into space to become a star. And so you would call out their names. This year we called out Prince. Purple rain. Oh. Okay. So they would call out their names of the people who had died and you release them from you. Because you carry them. Neha. You always carry your mate, but our tipuna would carry them for that period until Matariki rose. This is why now we might do something like wait 12 months before we unveil someone. Okay? It actually originates for waiting for the rising of Matariki. You release the dead from yourself. And the final thing they would do is they would cook a kai. It's called a umu kohu kohu fetu, a steamy star oven. And when uh, Matariki had been mourned over and the dead had been cast as stars, they would take the top off the oven and all the steam would rise up and feed Matariki because he's tired. The name of the food that you put in the earth oven to feed an atua is called a hautapu. And that is recorded in that haka. Ko te hau tapu e rite ki te kai na matariki. The sacred food that has been prepared to feed matariki. Tapa rei rei aku ia tapa. Severing the bonds to your dead. Ia ha ha. And then what happens? Ka tu te ihi ka tu te wana wana. And then the sun comes up. 
finishing the ceremony. That is what that haka means. Uh, well, Derek Lardelli told me that, so I'm not going to doubt him. Okay. Now I'm going to have my moan here, kare ma, while you're... So yeah, here are the dates for the setting of Matariki, for the rising of Matariki, and for the celebration period, based on the lunar phases. Uh, I've got them for 50 years, but you've got to buy my book. What I'm really stewing about uh, at the moment is um, who's telling our stories. Okay, this went up in stuff, according to stuff, June the sixth. This is a non-practitioner. I'm not going to tell his name. Non uh, person who has no understanding of Reo and Tikanga is not Maori telling us all there is Matariki. This called Matariki, everything there is to know about it. Okay? Matariki, tiny eyes. Is <coughs> the name for the group of stars also known as Pleiades or the Seven Sisters. Matariki is the name for the traditional Māori New Year. No, Matariki is the name of the cluster. Te Mātahi o Te Tau is the name for the Māori New Year. This is marked by the rise of Matariki and the sighting it's sighting in the next new moon. Kao, you won't see it in the next new moon. It's got here, Matariki Observance, June the 6th. I'll show you June the 6th. Hopefully this works. Honey, I'm going to show you. There is Matariki over here. Okay, I'm going to take the landscape away. I'm going to put this grid on. In order for Matariki to be seen, this is a horizon. Oh, hell, I'm going to have to go backwards in time. And I can't work it. There's the new moon. Matariki is here. There needs to be 21 degrees of separation between the star. And the sun has to be at least... 15 degrees below the horizon, while Matariki is 5 degrees above the horizon for you to see it. Okay? That's how you know. Otherwise, the sun comes up and it washes out the sky and these stars disappear. So, in order to see Matariki, it's got to be above the horizon at a particular height, while the sun is still below the horizon at a particular height. Depth, sorry. On the 6th, that wasn't happening. Sorry, I can't get this to work how I want it to work. I suppose what I was hoo-ha about um, was the fact that when this came out, when this came out and stuff, when these books came out, which aren't written by Māori, no one said anything. Kare tātou Gordon. No one said a thing. I came out this year and said, well, maybe we might have more than seven stars. Maybe we're too early. Maybe they have a different tikanga that's attached to the dead. Maybe we need to start debating whether or not we're following our traditional tikanga. Maybe we should return to practicing the umu kohu kohu fetu. Ho, oh, next minute, everyone's an astronaut. <laughs> everyone's telling me, ah, stop making up stuff. Ah, there's seven. We have no, you, you, you. Kaiteru kahu kue. Okay, and I, I was thinking about that when I read that and stuff. I read and waited for someone to comment on it. You know, we are looking at people that don't practice, have no connection to language or culture, are telling us who we are. A Māori does it, oh my God. Hey, go wait there, go here, go wait there, go don't bring your two hoist stuff here. <laughs> Pronounce your G's. <laughs> it's not rangi, it's rangi. <laughs> no, tato, tato te Māori, ka wani tato. You know, he wero te nekia tato. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. You know, if it comes from a Pākehā, we'll say nothing. It comes from our own, we're in boots and all. Hey, boots and... <laughs> 
You know, and I suppose I was a little hurt by some of the comments I read when, when I put it up. Not that I have a Facebook, but someone said, oh, look at what so-and-so said about you. I said, oh, Katie Pai, Katie Pai. And I was like, I'm not He ho no re he koro. Yo ya no. I think if no one's talking about you, then you're not doing a very good job. Hey, no one's talking about you. It's just kind of part of the territory. But you know, our, our, our ancestors, kei roto i warato kore, it's within there, what they've left us, is some real scientific knowledge and some real direction about uh, how these things were practiced. Let us not fall under the spell just because someone's an astrophysicist, that they know more about our tikanga than we know. We know our tikanga. Okay? And we should be practicing it we need to lead it. That's what I'm saying. Hands off our stars, not just our stars. We need to push back against what is a phenomenon of white noise. Okay, someone telling indigenous people who we are. Oh, I read books. Well, I read best, so I know all about your astronomy. God, I got kicked out of this. <laughs> this uh, the Ar Oxford Archaeo Astronomy Conference in Peru where I thought 33 cultures were going to talk about their star law. Only three people spoke for themselves. Māori, Rapa Nui, and the Taiwanese. Everyone else had an American, British, or Australian academic talk about an indigenous people and who they were. Oh, I was furious. So old Māori couldn't help himself. <laughs> hey. And I mean, all respect to the work that those academics have done. But there's a big, big difference between studying a culture and living a culture. So Māori gets up and says, well, I think you'll study our cultures because you don't have any of your own. Oh. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> My mate, she's uh, the only Māori astrophysicist, a woman by the name of Pauline Harris. Lovely. She took me there. She just looked and went, oh. <laughs> anyway. We were on Hakarimata in the um, Tangaroa phase. This is Matai, this fellow in the orange hoodie, where you see our little fire there. I wasn't going to carry rocks and kumara all the way up to Hakarimata. So I took up a pot and my gas burner. And we did our umu kohu kohu fetu. There's Matariki just in between the clouds. Okay, and we read that sign. We farewelled our dead. We fed. I didn't have a kereru, so he had a chicken wing this year. <laughs> um, you want to know the reading for this year? Okay. Buy my book. <laughs> $49.95. Okay, if the reading's wrong, warehouse, $12. Okay, this is my read this year. The two stars that stood out brightest for me, and it's the brightest I've ever seen, Waipunarangi, is one of them. It's going to be a long, long, hot and dry summer. We're going to drought in the second half of the year. I made that prediction when we were there. I'm making, I'm standing by that, that if my read is right, that we're going to drought in the second half. It was brilliant. It was bigger than the Matariki in the cluster, which is unusual. <coughs> which tell me that we're going to really, really get dry and our summer's going to last through to April. That's how long it's going to go. It's going to be really dry, really long. If I'm wrong, my book comes out in March, don't buy it. <laughs> but if you are having to read it in a swimming pool, pay full price, please. <laughs> the other star that was bright was Tipuanaku. So we're going to have really, really good gardens if you've got access to water. If you can access good water, your gardens will be really, really big and and. and Lush and mato mato for your tall mato. Yeah. <laughs> That's my read. There's another read for Pohutukawa, but you know, I'm not too sure whether that reads a collective or that reads just for me. Okay, so it's up to you on how you read it. What I want, what I want is for us to build our Whareko Korangi Māori again. That's what I'm after. That's what we need to lead this, and we need to tell people, oh, well, this is my read from my region. My tribe has their own whare kōkōrangi. We have our own whare kōkōrangi. So this year coming in March, my book for Matariki, which is more in depth than this, comes out. Hopefully the year after, 
There's a big fat one on Māori astronomy. We're going to look to start having Māori astronomy papers taught here at uh, the faculty if you're interested. Um, something that we're really trying to grow. Um, and uh, Erica might be gone, but she's the person responsible for these photos. So we were down in the South Island when Tahunui Te Rangi turned up. That's the aurora. There's Matariki over Auraki. Over here, there's Matariki setting after the sun. That's from Kapu, Te Rangi and Whakatane. This is the Takitimu Ranges in, um, in the South Island. This is the most important whareinu in the world. Koe nei noi hona kōrero e karema, ko te tūmana ko ia, e puta te tahi kōrero pai ki a koutou. Tānui te mihi, thank you for coming, uh, have a great day, uh, and uh, tā tika te mihi ki tēnei kaupapa, te rā whakanui tō tātou kīngi. Uh, nō reira, tā nui taku mihi. Kia ora tātou. Kia ora tātou.